with the right, knock him out, knock him out, knock him out for the night. One time, knock him out. Two, two, two times, knock him out, knock him out, knock him out for the night. So, there was this middle-aged woman who had a heart attack. And on her, on her way to the emergency room, she had a near-death experience. And she went and saw God. And she asked God, is this it? Is this my time? And God says, no. You have 47 years, six months, and two days left. So she gets back to the emergency room. And immediately as she wakes up, she gets liposuction. She gets lip injections, Botox, all the works. She's ready to walk out. She walks out the hospital, goes across the street, immediately gets slammed by ambulance, killed. She goes back up to heaven, fuming, asking God, what happened? You said I had 40 plus years to live. And God says to her, I didn't recognize you. <laughs> and now there's two key things to take from that. One is time, and the second is identity. Why is it that once she realized that she had a certain amount of time to live, she immediately altered her identity? And that takes us to this question of what box? You know, everyone always talks about this box. Think outside the box. Is there a box? Is this box invisible? But I want to take the moment today to just reflect a little bit and go a little deep and to possibly maybe get you guys to admit that we do live in a box. And that box is the box of existence. And it's made up of two things, time and identity. And now time is nothing that we can really do about. You know, we can maybe live, eat, and, uh, and leave, um, eat well and stay healthy, but there's nothing that we can really do about it. It's kind of already set. And the second thing is identity. And man, does that give us troubles, right? It's something that we battle our entire lives. It's always a battle within our mind, but it is something that we can really enjoy and grow upon if we really connect and align with it. And it's something that is a voice that happens around three or four years old. I don't know if you guys can remember the first time you actually remember your voice in your head. And it's something that gets developed and formulated depending on our family, nature versus nurture. It could be a loving family. It could, be a, it could be through neglect. It could be through abuse. It could be through depression, anxiety, anger. All these different things that go on at an early age is what I believe starts to formulate this voice in our head and our identity. And I'll take it back for me. I was born in 1986 in Joliet, Illinois. There's absolutely nothing in Joliet, Illinois except for a correctional facility. And I always ask my mother, what in the world were you doing there then? And she can never answer me. And from that moment up to about four years old is when I started to recognize this voice in my head. And at the four years old, we were traveling, go all the time to all these different hotels. I thought they were hotels, and I found out they were shelters. And we were meeting all these different people, and I was living with all these different families, and I realized it was foster care. And at one moment, this one girl, an older girl, um, who used to always bully me, said to me, what are you? Are you black? Are you white? Are you Spanish? Who's your daddy? And it hit me. I didn't know any of those answers. I didn't know who I was. And I went back and asked my mom when I saw her again, and I said, who is my father? What am I? Am I white, black? And she really didn't have any answers. And at that moment, my identity was formed with confusion. And it stuck with me in my entire life up until recently. And now, everyone doesn't have the same story of their moment of identity. And the voice is not the same. But we each individually have experienced that voice depending on our situation. I was just talking to a very good friend of mine. He comes from LES. And his entire time growing up was this identity of coming from the projects and it was violence. And, you know, we were able to handle this. And there was a street crew and a lot of um, just gang activity and getting involved with the, the drug scene. And he recently went back to LES and Avenue A, and he couldn't believe it. Because this entire identity that he formed in this building, he went up to the 14th floor. And guess what it was? It was now a waterfront condo. And nothing changed but the refrigerator and the color of the door. And he lost over 10 friends through this identity because of this project, this pride. And it doesn't just have to be in poverty. You know, this family's an influence. I have a friend of mine that was born in a very affluent family. And his whole entire life, he battled with why he has this much money. And he would, and he would, and he would um, deal with it by, having, by indulging in short-term happiness and fulfilling his desires. And unfortunately, he succumbed to drug addiction. And these are the things that we battle now. Again, now everyone has a negative experience. There are a positive experience with our identity. And I really wanted to dive in and talk to people that have had positive experience, because you ever wonder why some people just really seem to get it. You know, they really seem to be able to think outside the box. They really seem to be able to get, all their, get past all their hurdles in life and just always seem to have a base. And they told me, one person told me, 
It's because I have a foundation. I have a base. I really understand my values. And nobody can change my values. There's a, a quote by a man named Frederick Clayton that says, if we're not able to formulate our own opinions, we're subject to other people's opinions, thus making us slaves. And that's what I understood, is that my entire life I was always chasing somebody else's identity for myself because I was so confused. And I know that a lot of us still deal with that this today. Around the age of 10 years old, I actually moved in with my aunt and uncle, and they were both pastors. And so I became, um, you know, born again. I was a pastor's son, and I still am to this day. I believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But it took me a long time to really figure out what that meant. And I went from 10 to college, and I just went all around the places. And I, in college, I started hanging out with the wrong people and the, just getting into a negative environment. And I knew this wasn't for me. And we'd go to clubs, and I'd get involved with women. But this was my identity. You know, this is what I wanted to do. And one night, I got into altercation with somebody, and I got hit in the head with a bottle at a club, and I got hit over here with a razor, and it hit an artery. And at that moment, I was losing all this blood, and I was in the ambulance. I remember the doctor saying, someone needs to call his family because we don't think he's going to make it. But at that moment, there was something weird that happened. I remember my father, he, was, he always would say certain things to me, like, you're a child of God, Danny, you're not meant for this. We know who you are. And it, it gave me a sense of peace in this dark moment. And when I woke up, I promised myself I was going to refine who I was, realign myself with my identity. And now I know there's people out here that may not have near-death experiences, but you might be struggling with pain in your family. You might have a brother or a sister or a daughter or a father that's struggling with addiction, or you might be going through financial stress. There's a great quote by Mike Tyson before a fight where there, someone was planning to fight him, and he says, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> but such is life. Life will punch you in the face, and it's, it's hard, and it's difficult. And in order for us to really get past all these boundaries and get past all these hurdles and climb these mountains, we have to align ourselves with some values. Now, what values those are is up to you. It's up to you and your mind and your voice, because everyone's values are different, especially in this society today where things are rapidly changing, society is changing. There's a, a divisive political narrative going on right now. In order for us to become unionized again and really come within uniformity, we have to respect other people's values and opinions. But in order to be able to do that, you still have to know what yours are. Once we get a base of our values, we're then able to now start thinking outside the box. And this is where beautiful things start to happen. Winston Churchill says that success is the ability to go from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. And how can we really do that if every single time something comes that hits us or is dark or some type of hurdle, we lose enthusiasm, we lose our joy? Being aligned with yourself and now being able to think outside the box give you a, gives you a place to retreat that safety. And so when we're thinking and we're trying to figure out solutions, and it doesn't just have to be in a job. It doesn't just have to be in an industry. It can be, how do I solve my family's problems that have been going on for 30 years? How do I solve problems within my community? How do I solve problems within my church? How do I solve problems with anything that you're going through on a daily basis? Or even, how do I really get to talk to myself again? How can I listen to the voices in my head and make sure that it's not depressing, it's not giving me anxiety, and I have joy. And this is all within the box of existence. We all have it. We all have a time, and we all have an identity, and it's a beautiful thing. And once we're able to actually start growing from that is when we can always have joy and peace. And that's my time, and that's the box of existence. Two, 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 times knock him out, knock him out, knock him out for the night.